cold as a razor blade, as tight as a tourniquet, like the skin on a dying man. I don't want a piece of the world. I want the whole world. I make my own rules because it's much easier that way. Trust me. What's up, everybody? It's Marcus D'Angelo, and we are back for another episode of The Snake Pit. And of course, I'm joined by the Hall of Famer, Master of the DDT, the legend, and the man who just dropped a motherfucker with a DDT. It's Jake the Snake Roberts. Jake, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great, man. Uh, you know, uh, I'm not dead yet, you know, and I'm, uh, I can still do things if I want to. And, um, uh, you know, it just uh, it was one of those uh, sperm in the moment things, you know. I just decided I wanted to do it because uh, I knew I could, mm -hmm. but it's been so long, you know, and uh, just having fun, you know, uh, doing doing a buddy of mine a favor. Uh, and uh, he's of, with uh, SHW. Southern Honor Wrestling. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, guys, if you don't know what we're talking about, check out Jake's social media at Jake Snake DDT on uh, Twitter, and you can find him on Instagram and Facebook as well. Uh, that that video is up there, and it got a big, big reaction. Jake, when is the last time that you dropped somebody with the DDT? Oh, it's, it's been several years. Wow, I can't, I can't really remember. Man, it's it was awesome to see, and hopefully, hopefully, we'll see it uh, maybe on a larger stage at some point. Enough that on that, nice. though. That that would be nice. Uh, I'm I'm hoping that we do it. Uh, but I'm I'm really excited about what we're doing today because today we're talking about a guy that you had a very short but a very memorable rivalry with. We're talking about Bad News Brown, and oh, uh, yeah, man, Bad News Man. I have a feeling you've got some stories on this one, brother. Oh, not a whole lot. You know, the funniest thing was that damn sewer rat. <laughs> You know, <laughs> man, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to get there. Uh, before we do, let's jump into these notes. Alan Koj had a long history in judo before ever setting foot in a wrestling ring. He won uh, gold medals in the Pan American Games and a bronze medal in the 1976 Summer Olympics before retiring and spending some time as a bodyguard for Aretha Franklin before getting into pro wrestling and spending time bouncing around between Japan, WWWF and stampede jake i know that you yourself were all over the map as well in the late 70s and early 80s yeah did you ever cross paths with bad news before no i hadn't man and i sure wished i had him because he was a super guy we got along really well yeah so you know i know that he's developed a bit of a reputation for being you know uh, a tough guy and uh you know maybe a guy that it could be prickly at times uh, but I mean, everything he's had to say about you and, and the research that I was doing yeah. was all positive. He loved working with you as well. We'll get there. But, uh, you know, with his background, he developed this reputation, like I said, for just being a very tough dude. Have you heard any stories about his toughness or seen it firsthand? No, I hadn't. And I'm sure glad I didn't, you know, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. Uh, I had heard that he was hard to get along with. I heard he could be, as you say, prickly, but uh, it never it never came to it never came out. It never came out, man. And, uh, you know, we just went out there and, and did what we were supposed to do, you know, and uh, had a good time doing it. You know, I was devastated when, when, he, when I heard of his death, man, you know, just shocked, you know, that, that something you could die like that, you know, having an operation that's just so simple. Right. You know, and uh, I've had two hips replaced, and uh, for him to, to die having a hip replaced, man, just blows my mind. Awful, man. And, like, you know, he's a, you know, we all see him as this big, tough, imposing character, but he was a family yeah. man, too. And yes, a guy he was. Just trying to support his family. And uh, so, yeah, that's uh, 2007, I believe, is when he passed away. And that's, yeah. I mean, way too young. Um, so I do want to ask, though, kind of reverting back to him being tough. Did you ever hear the story about the issue between him and Andre in New Japan? No, I didn't. 
Okay, so Brown uh, alleges that he was on a bus with with Andre in New Japan and overheard Andre, who was very intoxicated, making some raci- racist remarks uh, near the back of the bus. Um, oh Brown Brown confronted him about it and uh, invited him to step off the bus so they could settle it like men. Andre declined. He was waiting for him to come off the bus, and Stan Hansen apparently said, "Hey, just he's drunk. Just let him go." And you know there was some tension for years following them after wow. that. Um, I safe to say you never saw that tension while you were in the WWF. No, man, I've never heard about it. Man, probably a good thing because uh, you know Andre was not in the best of shape, of course, during the the nineties in the WWF, and no. you know it's you'd hate to see it, two guys under any circumstances getting into a, into a fight yeah. backstage. Well, neither was bad news, man. His knees were shot. Yes, that's actually why he retired from judo, um, because he had uh, apparently some knee issues. Uh, Was that a struggle for you when you were in the ring with him? It was, but I knew what to do and what not to do, you know. Uh, The thing with him was he had a hard time getting back up if he went down. Okay. You know, so what do you do? You don't knock him down. (laughs) (laughs) Or if you do, you knock him down near the ropes so he can grab the ropes and pull himself up, you know. Oh, okay. Much, much the same way I worked with Andre. Yes. Okay. And now, was that a conversation that you would have had with him before stepping into the ring, or did you just kind of know intuitive, intuitively to help him out? I knew. I, I, I seen his problem. I didn't ever, you know, confront him with it. I didn't want to make him feel bad about it, bad about it, because he's a proud man. And yeah. uh, I just went ahead and just did the sensible thing, you know. And uh, you never expose your opponent's weakness. Right. That doesn't, that doesn't do you any good in the ring. If you've got somebody that can't get up and get down, for God's sakes, don't knock them down. You know, unless you knock them down, like I said, near the ropes so they can get back up. You want him looking like a big, tough, I want uh, him unstoppable to be a monster. heel. Yeah. I want him to be a monster. That way, if I somehow squeak out a win over him, then I've, I've beat a monster. Man, simple psychology, but not enough people think about that kind of shit. No, they um, don't. Brown developed, like I said, this reputation for being prickly. Uh, do you think that he was a little bit too aggressive as a person, or is it just a case of people being frustrated with a guy who's willing to stick up for himself? I, I think that he just uh, he believed in what he believed in, man. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, he had been promised a lot coming to the WWF. Yes. And uh, for reasons unbeknownst to me, but I'm sure it has something to do with his inability to get up and down, him and Hogan never had their run. Uh, I had heard that he'd been promised a long run with Hogan if he would ditch his contract with uh, Japan and come to WWF. Yep. Now, Brown has it in a uh, shoot interview that um, apparently Hogan had like heard somewhere along the way that Brown had been paid in New Japan to break Hogan's arm or something like that, and I think that that made that made Hogan withdraw from any idea of having a rivalry with him. Brown, oh, of course, is uh, like nobody fucking paid me to break Hogan's arm. Um, yeah, I, I don't believe that. I don't buy it either. Uh, and so, but as you said, Vince McMahon promised him a WWF championship run when he brought Brown into the WWF yeah. in 1988. Uh, allegedly, Vince even told him that he'd be able to retire young after his run with the company. Did you see him as a guy who could have carried the WWF championship despite his injuries? It could have been done. Mm-hmm. It could have been done. Uh, it would have taken a lot of work, you know, and the people that worked with him would have had to do the same thing I did, you know, take care of it. But it could have worked. And we're talking about 1988 through 1990 was his run with the WWF. Uh, yeah. he, he would have been the first African-American world champion ever yeah. before Ron Simmons, a couple years right. before Ron Simmons would have. Um, and so, yeah, it's I don't know. I, I think that, you know, the wrestling world was certainly ready for it. And he seemed, he seemed like he had all the tools. He would have been the guy to do it with because he had the background to back it up with. He had been a badass, you know. Yeah. 
And, you know, events uh, would famously, you know, bring in guys like Kurt Angle and, and other uh, legitimate athletes, quote unquote. Uh, and, you know, this guy had a bronze star in the 1976 Summer yeah. Olympics. Like, yeah. you don't get much more legit than the Olympics. No, you don't. Uh, they don't hand those things out just to anybody. No, sir. Now, uh, when you first meet him in the WWF, good first impressions? Like, hey, oh, nice yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, he was always uh, friendly and open with me. And uh, we never had a problem in the ring. We went out there and just had fun, you know. Oh. I worked with him. I sold him for him. Uh, tried to make him look as good as I could. And uh, for whatever reason, Vince just wanted me to beat him down, you know. That wasn't wasn't the deal. I mean, he had us wrestle each other and then had me win and then sent us back for a return and had me win again. Mm -hmm. and then sent us back for a cage match and had me win again. <laughs> I think he was trying to make news snap. It's, well, it, it worked. And it, honestly, uh, according to these notes, it was starting to work a little bit ahead of time, um, even before his rival rivalry with you started. So yeah. ahead of your rivalry, you're seeing this guy. Uh, he's got all these tools to be the WWF champion, as we've discussed, but he's having some issues with Rowdy Roddy Piper um, and and during the rivalry uh, for WrestleMania six. Uh, so this is the infamous match where Piper painted himself half black and yeah. uh, and Piper claimed that it was his idea and Vince loved it. Brown thought it was offensive, but he rolled with it. Uh, Jake, when you see Rowdy Rowdy Piper walking around backstage half black, uh, what did you think? Oh, my God. I thought, how stupid, man. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, how much more do you want to do to a guy, man, before you have him snap on you? And uh, the bad thing was Roddy didn't use the right paint. <laughs> right. That shit wouldn't come off. <laughs> So rumor has it that there's a solution backstage to remove this paint because they wanted to get this paint that wouldn't uh, come off whenever he was sweating. Um, but it was tampered with as a rib on Piper. Um, yeah. which forced, he uh, he allegedly went something like two weeks with half of himself. Yeah. Black before yeah. It all come off. yeah. Um, I'm not saying that you had anything to do with tampering. Oh, it wasn't me. Okay. I was going to say, though, it sounds like some Jake the Snake Roberts stuff. No, 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 no. I, I think Roddy said that it was Andre, which is just, man, what a great rib. Dude. It was Andre? Uh, allegedly, Andre took the solution and replaced it with water. Oh, wow. <laughs> as soon as I heard it, though, I was like, that that really sounds like Jake. So yes, I, I just had me, to double check. <laughs> right. It was not me, I swear to you. Well, uh, Brown's issues with the company kind of started there. Like, obviously, he was frustrated along the way because he had been promised in 88. Now we're in 1990, still nothing. Um, and apparently Piper, who was working part time for the company, refused to put him over as it was originally planned for WrestleMania. And Brown said that if Piper won't lay down for him, he won't do it for Piper, uh, which is why the match ended in a lame double count out. Yeah. Also, Piper allegedly made 50 grand for the event and Brown only made 10,000. And after that, he was like, fuck this, I'm done. Um, so he's immediately programmed with you and he said in this interview that he was, he was thrilled about it cause he really liked you and he liked your work. Uh, how much did you know about the issues between Piper and Brown? I didn't know anything about that shit, man. Really? I'm glad I didn't. <clears throat> man, good for you keeping out of that fucking drama. Cause, yeah, uh, man. I don't, you know, I never was one to play that drama shit, man. Never was. Maybe I should have been, but I wasn't. Well, you know, I know you hear about the guys who do all that backstage politicking in the WWF. Yeah. And I'm sure that in getting yourself involved in the drama is part of that. But if, like, if, if it's me, did, man. like, don't you just want to go get your paycheck and go the fuck that's, home? Or that's what I want to do, man. Do do what I'm supposed to do. Get my shit and get out of there. Um. So, did Roddy have a reputation though for not wanting to do business? To your knowledge? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, did you ever experience it firsthand? Uh, no, we never got it uh, paired up. Oh, okay. But you, uh, you had heard about it because oh you know, yeah, the oh, rumor yeah. was he wouldn't lay down for Hogan either. Right. Yeah. What is that? What uh, you heard, or what else have you? Yeah, heard? that's what I'd heard too. Okay. I heard that he wouldn't lay down for anybody, which is to me, it's just ridiculous. Ridiculous. It, 
it's a work. It's a, like, it so, is a work, man. And, and if if your shit isn't good enough to sustain you through doing a job for somebody, your shit must be pretty damn weak. Agreed. Agreed. And, you know, Piper's shit was anything but weak. He had a great shtick. He was over. Oh, it's like, man. dude, you could get away with laying down for somebody. Hell yeah. Um, Brown said the Piper is too damn mouthy too, and he was happy to move on to you because he knew eventually he's going to beat the shit out of out of Roddy if they kept working together. Um, so I mean, was he mouthy around you? Like, I'm I'm curious because I never hear about your experiences with Roddy. Yeah, I never had a problem with Roddy. Never once. Nope, not once. Interesting, because we always do hear what a strong personality he is, and certainly you're a strong personality, and normally guys like that don't get along very well. Huh? Never had a problem with you, man. That's awesome. Okay, guys, let's take a minute to discuss our partner, our friends over there at AG1. Why are they our friends? Because they have truly reshaped both mine and Jake's lives in the time that we've been using it. It's the daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. You know, guys, I used to start every day taking a bunch of multivitamins, or how about even worse, mixing a healthy shake. The vitamins were expensive and annoying, and to get the shake right, you've got to go shopping. You've got to add all the ingredients. You have to clean the blender afterwards, take a bunch of your valuable time up, when really it could just be as simple as one scoop. Nearly a year ago, I began drinking AG1 every day because I was fed up with my morning routine, and it has truly become a game changer for me. Now I have a single solution that supports my entire body and covers my nutritional bases every day. I wanted more energy. I wanted to make sure that my immune system was well supported, especially with my daughter in daycare bringing home germs every day. I wanted better gut health. I wanted a simple solution to incorporate into my daily routine that I enjoyed the taste of. AG1 checked every single box. Here's the best part for me, guys. It is easy. My schedule is very full pretty much every day, and AG1 made life easy for me by providing 75 high-quality ingredients that give me key daily nutrients by mixing one small scoop with water. That's it. I drink it. I'm done. It's an easy micro habit that delivers macro results. And so look, I know what your next question must be. How much does it cost? How about less than $3 a day? Break the habit of going to Starbucks or the gas station every day to get some crazy, gross, unhealthy breakfast or some expensive specialty coffee that you don't need. Spend less money and get a science-driven formulation of vitamins, probiotics, and whole food source nutrients instead with AG1. Now that is a win-win. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is go to drinkag1.com forward slash snake. That's drinkag1.com slash snake, S-N-A-K-E. Guys, you've got to check it out. Uh, so did you know that Brown was on his way out the door whenever you started your program with him, though? I felt something was up. I knew by the finishes something was up. You know, (laughs) you don't uh, keep beating a guy every time you go around with him, man. You know, but the funny thing was, is it kept drawing. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the reason they kept putting us together is because it drew. Even with the uh, uh, sewer rat. (laughs) We're we're almost there to talk about that, and I can't wait to hear you talk about it. Um, at the 4-3 TV taping, you have your first encounter, so to speak, with Brown as he gets an interesting birthday present. That's our first clip this week. Bad news on a lighter note. I have it on good authority that you're celebrating your birthday this week. Yes. Who told you about my birthday? What the heck's going on? You been following me around or what? No. Bad news, I understand. How do you know it's my birthday? I, I said I have it on good authority. And with that in mind, bad news, I'm here to present you a birthday present. A birthday present? Yeah. I don't want no birthday present. What is that? I don't want no birthday present. I don't for, need no birthday present. It's for you. I don't want it. I don't want no birthday present. What birthday present? Who gave you that to give to me? Well, it's not important uh, who gave it to me. Wait, wait, wait a minute. It's my birthday present, isn't it? Thought you said you didn't want it. Don't worry about what I said. If you want to do something, yeah, stand here and hold this thing while I open it. 
What is that? Why is he? What's wrong with him? And he's scared to death. Just a box. Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. It's only a rubber snake. A rubber snake. He's scared to death. Well, he didn't know it was a rubber snake. It's only a rubber snake. That's all it is here. You can yeah, you know who's behind this, don't you, Monsoon? Who, who gave you the snake? Who gave what? you the snake? Get your who hands off the snake? Oakland. I'm going to find out who did Kick him. And going to be sorry. That's disgusting. Kick him. Bring him. Despicable. Waffle him. A birthday should be a happy occasion, bad news, bro. All I was trying to do was put a smile on your face. I mean, you carry a chip on that shoulder so large, brother. All I wanted to do was make you a little happy. Well, happy birthday anyway, bad news. Hope you enjoy it. All right. So <laughs> there's step one in building the rivalry. You know, Jake, the most shocking part of that whole thing for me was that one of the boys didn't put a fucking dildo in that box. That's what I was yeah, expecting. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, man, you're a shit disturbing baby face uh, here, and it, and it works pretty well. It's so simple, <laughs> so simple. You know, sometimes the simplest of angles work mm -hmm. because everybody can understand how simple. You know, hey, Dad, that'd be funnier to hell to do, man. And they they buy it, and they did buy it. <laughs> they did, they did, and why not? Like, yeah, he's he's uh, like like other baby or heels before him. You know, he was frightened of the snakes, and yeah. you can use that advantage. It's just funny, you know, because it's like you're this baby face, but you're like just fucking with this guy for no reason, and the yeah, audience shit just disturber. and the audience just accepts it. They're like, yeah, that's Jake. Yeah. <laughs> I like it, though. Uh, so the creative, though, going into this program with bad news, you were feeling pretty good all around. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I think it's notable here that Brown's actual birthday was in October, but uh, he's 46 going on 47 here. Yeah. Uh, nowadays, that's nothing, but that's pretty old at the time. Yeah, it was rough. Uh, as far as trying to, to manage everything with him? Yeah, getting him up and down was, was you know cumbersome at times. Now, I know that you said you would get him near the ropes. At right. any point, are you ever doing that thing where you're, like, helping him up? You know, like, guys will grab each other by the hair or underneath oh, the chin. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. So sure. that kind of puts yeah. you in a in a weird position. Used all the tricks. Mm-hmm. Uh, despite that, though, you were enjoying the idea that you got oh, the, yeah. the guy. Oh, yeah. I enjoyed my time with him. It was easy. Well, at this same TV taping, you're going to defeat uh, an enhancement talent, Buddy Rose. And after that, Brown is going to come down and tell everybody that he found out it was you who put the snake in the birthday present. He'll threaten to come down to the ring, but eventually turn and run when you tease bringing Damien out to him. Uh, Buddy Rose, a name I suspect we will never bring up here again. I did a double take when I saw the footage because I thought it was Dusty Rhodes there for a second. <laughs> um, I've, I've heard he had his fair share of issues outside of the ring. Did you spend yeah. much time around, Buddy? No, I didn't, man. But I, I knew of his... Uh... His problems, you know, some some that I had too. So, right, yeah, he was a party yeah. guy. His biggest issue, though, apparently, was was keeping weight off. Um, yeah, according yeah. to what I was reading. Uh, well, as you mentioned, you were going to be beating Brown at every single house show for the next few weeks. And the next big moment between yourself and him is at the five fifteen TV taping in Lacrosse, Wisconsin. We got the clip right now. <laughs>
by. The snake can't get out of the bag. All of a sudden now, Bad News Brown has a lot of guts. What's he going to do? Maybe he's going to put the snake on Jack for a chance. Taking the back of the head. He's going to hit Damien with a chair. No, he's not. Oh, come on. Bad News Brown now. The snake can't get out. He can't run. He can't protect himself. Bad News Brown now. The chair is going to jam it down into the snake. The snake's tied up. <laughs> Bad News Brown with a chair. This could end Damien once and for all, McMahon. And Jake trying to come in. No more snake abuse. You got to get in there. Change of pace. Jake saving Damien. And look! Damien's out of the back. Give it to him, Jake. Give it to him. Oh, look. Look, Bad News is trapped. Bad News runs for cover. Bad News is running for cover. What's he doing? Bad News is going out in the crowd. Bad News Brown's going all the way out in the crowd, jumping. He's scared to death of the snake. Scared well, to death. He's got a phobia, McMahon. Sympathy for him. Sympathy. Get him. Get him. Get him. Bad news is running. He's running. Bad news is running all the way up on the crowd. What a chicken. How yellow can you get? So, uh, <laughs> pretty fun, pretty fun stuff. And like a kind of a precursor to the stuff with Earthquake, like less than a year later where yeah, Earthquake crushes yeah. Damien. So I thought that, yeah. that was a, that was a cool angle. Uh, couldn't help but notice that Vince was really kind of coming after Brown, calling him a chicken and yellow and whatnot. Oh yeah. So like between you getting all these super decisive victories on the road and now Vince is ca calling him a coward and trying to paint that picture oh, yeah. on TV. I mean, it, it's clear that he was on his way out the door um, it, I, and Vince was just trying to bury him. Or am I overthinking it? You're not overthinking it. Is that Typical Vince. Is that a customary thing in other territories where you want to like, no, make the guy look like No, Vince does it. Vince does it. Interesting, because uh, you know it's you'd think you'd want to keep the door open for a possible return instead of making the no, guy look like an asshole. No, 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 he had way too many problems. Man, what a waste! Because you know you can see him in the ring. His his facials are great. He has these big reactions. You know he's uh, he has all the all the stuff. Yeah, he just couldn't move, man. It sucks, man. You continue to beat him decisively on the road. Brown gets hypnotized to try and cure himself of the snake phobia and is convinced it works <laughs> until an enhancement talent chases him out of the ring with a rubber snake. So that didn't work. Uh, following that, though, Brown develops a new plan, and it's featured in our next clip. This is what you've been referencing, Jake. size a rat is. Oh, they're maybe three, four, five inches long, but that's that's about it. Let me tell you something, Baldy. I know you from Apple Pie USA, but you ain't never seen no hollow mutant rat. Matter of fact, take a look at there. Take a look up under there. See, I hadn't fed these bad boys in about a month. So I'm going to feed them here now so these people can see. And then after that, I'm not going to feed them until it's time for Summer Slam. See this? It's a big T-bone steak. How much? That must be about a, a 22, 24 ounce. Oh, this is just a treat for these guys here. That's a, that's a treat. That's a treat. Whoa, they get, they're pretty hungry here. They're pretty hungry. Whoa. Ha, 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 ha. 
<laughs> mutant, mutant rats, Jake. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I love it. From the from the sewers of Harlem. Yeah. Uh, to fight Surprised up. it wasn't a mutant ninja turtle. That's what I was gonna say. This is like the era of the teenage mutant ninja turtles. And it was like somebody in creative was watching TV and was like, "Hey, there's an idea." Yeah, well, I got a good idea. Mutant sewer rat. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's campy, but people still talk about it to this day. What did you think, dude? Oh, I thought it was the shits. <laughs> oh, I was so fucking in love. Like, are you saying anything backstage? Like, hey, what the fuck are we doing here? I was like, come on, guys. For fuck's sake, at least use a rat. Don't use a fucking possum. <laughs> oh, my God. That's what it was, you know. It was a fucking <laughs> possum, and they spray painted it black. <laughs> It was awesome. It was. And uh they they only show the possum on TV maybe twice, something like yeah, that. Yeah. Uh and the possum looks like it's dead. I guess it's playing possum because uh, yeah, that's what they do. <laughs> Brown is holding it up and it's just like limp and like not looking fierce at all. It's like, what are we doing, guys? Um and I guess Vince like didn't was just hoping that nobody was like the outdoors type, none of his, no, his viewers. I think, I think he was just putting the final nails in the coffin. Oh God, it was you know, awful, awful. Bad news. Uh, but I mean, again, uh, memorable. People still talk about it. Do you yeah. think he like was it Vince's attempt to recapture that old magic you had with Steamboat and the Dragon and the Snake? No, 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 no. He was just wanting to slam the door. Okay, this was his yeah. like definitive burial this was of Brown. The burial of Bad News Brown. <laughs> Did you get to be around the possums at all, Jake? Uh, not unless I had to. <laughs> Hey guys, need to call a quick time out here. Wanted to tell your listeners what I've been telling my listeners over at OU didn't know for a while now about all the cool things happening over at adsfreeshows.com. We recently celebrated the 25 year anniversary of the biggest Nitro of all time when Goldberg faced Hollywood Hogan at the Georgia Dome. Eric, alongside the Taskmaster Kevin Sullivan and the living legend Larry Zabisco, joined Ad Free Shows members live to relive it. Yeah, well, you can't fire me now, so I'll tell you the truth. I don't think I don't think anything can beat that. That was the ultimate. I mean, they broke the decibel record. The roof blew off the place. It, it was amazing. Totally amazing. Speaking of the Taskmaster, Kevin Sullivan joins AdFreeShows.com starting this July with a brand new mailbag series, Tuesday with the Taskmaster answering your questions each and every week. I have over 50 years of experience in the wrestling business, and I'm happy to be on this platform with Conrad. So send in your letters, you got a question, I can go back even past 50 years, and I'm a wrestling historian. So anything you wanna know, we'll try to deliver. That's just a small taste of what we got waiting for you. With four levels to choose from, see for yourself why Ads Free Shows is the best value in wrestling today. Sign up now at adsfreeshows.com. Man, it's just a wild, wild idea. Any memory of uh, how Brown was reacting to this piece of business? No, man. He just wanted to go ahead and get it over with, get, get the one, two, three in, and, and just do our business, you know? Yeah, he was ready to move on, I know. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you've been all over the country with Brown at this point. Would you say that, like, you know, I know that you enjoyed working with him. Would you yeah. say that the two of you were becoming buds, though? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were Definitely. getting, I mean, yeah, so we were buddies, man. Oh, good, good. Yeah. So, like, like going out after the shows, kind of buddies, or just happy? Uh, no, like... we were still kayfabe in it, you know. Okay. Old school I shit. I gotcha. Now, did he ever voice any of his frustrations to you over the course of this no. time? No. Man, he was frustrated as hell, and it shows because Brown would no-show a house show with no given reason on the way to SummerSlam as well, leaving you with Mr. Perfect as a substitute, which is a pretty good sub. Yeah. Um, but you're finding yourself in the middle of some drama here, and I know, as we discussed, you're just not the type who wants to get involved in that shit. Um, no. I know you just want to be from one town to the next and get your job yeah. done. I mean, you personally, Jake, are you getting frustrated as this program is coming to an end? Where you, or are you like sympathizing with with Brown? I was sympathizing with him, right. and I knew something was up because I keep beating him every night. Every night, you know, 
how the hell do you work an angle three times around and, and you haven't lost to the guy yet? Not a single time. So like you were dropping with the DDT most nights, some nights it was a DQ, but like the DQs were far and few and far between for the most part, you are winning clean with the DDT every single night, which is just, I mean, you know, when I was doing the research for Rick Martel, he was beating you fairly often during the house shows. So like, it's clear they were just trying to fucking bury this guy on his way out the door. Oh yeah. Uh, well, uh, let's get to the match at SummerSlam itself. It's in the Spectrum at Philly, uh, and it's sold out in front of a crowd of more than 19,000. The house sets a Pennsylvania state record for revenue, which is amazing. Uh, and your match with Brown is under five minutes. Let's watch the final moments of it. And Jake the Snake to the buckle. My goodness. News yeah. now. You ever, the midsection. you ever smelled bad news? Chemical, it. chemical warfare again. Oh, really? Oh, 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 oh. Some say that snake stinks as well. Wait a minute. <laughs> Jake was give him a little fuck you in the middle of the match. Yeah. That, that cost me $500. Did it really? Brown, yeah. Uh, still I'm not shy about finding you. Taking his time. Bad news, Brown with Jake the Snake again, the whip to the buckle. That is going to take its toe. Oh, my, close line. Bad news, yes. He's sensing victory right about now, I think. I think he's trying to set him up for the ghetto blaster now. He sees he's got him down, had him down for a while. Unusual for Bad News to go up on the ropes like that. That's not a patent move by Bad News. And he misses by a mile. Jake the Snake Come on, was Jake. laying in the grass for him. The snake needs to get up and recoil a little bit here. Get up, snake. I hate snakes. Bad news, Brown again, moving in on Jake the Snake Roberts for the ride to the ropes, coming off in. Oh, nice knee there. Jake now, oh yeah, there he goes. Oh, snap. Oh, snap laps, winds up. Bad news, Brown. Oh, yeah. Let's get past the crowd. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck Piper is talking about right now. He had his head oil. Bad news, Brown once again. Outside, what's he? Has the chair again. Oh, watch out, you'll get chastised again. Bad news, bad news. Oh, that's it. Well, I guess the big boss man is not taking any guff. I guess that's it. All right, so Jake, well, that after, stunk, didn't it? After beating him clean on the house shows all the yeah, way through, yeah. all of a sudden you get to the big blow off match here at SummerSlam, yeah, and, and it's a fucking DQ. Yeah, what any reason given? Fuck no, <laughs> I just can't wrap my head around it, man. I'm like, sure, I'm sure bad news had something to say about that. Like, as far as he would have wanted to put you over. Clean. No, I think I think it was just a thing between him and Vince. Fuck you. I'm done. Okay. So like he was he was saying like, hey, look, because he was off to Japan next. So you think yeah. that he was like not doing it before I not go? Not doing it. Yeah. Man, that sucks. It sucks for the audience, and the the finish was shit. Uh, and by the yeah. way, his mutant rats, which are a huge part of the storyline, they never made one single appearance during that whole match. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you'd think, though, that it would be like the dragon thing where he'd come at you with the rat, you come at him with the snake. It's just, man, disjointed. No, 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 no. Some things are better left uh, in a box. Well, you can tell that something went awry that night because that feels like one of those finishes, as you said, that was thrown together at the last minute, and they just said, just get it out there and do it. Yeah. Um, well, either way, Jake, is still, despite that that kind of uh, shitty finish, the rivalry is really well remembered by fans, something a lot of folks still enjoy talking and uh, talking about and watching back today. Let's, let's, let's do a couple quick fan questions, and I'll let you go, brother. All right, bro. 
Uh, Ed Helinski asks, regarding 1990, what was your WWF mindset like? Were you in a good place, or was it the grind of the business plus the added distractions making it difficult? So, Jake, that one is interesting. Ventura leaves during this time. Brown is yeah. clearly frustrated. He's out yeah. the door. Warriors champion, and I know that a lot of people weren't happy with that. No. So how were you feeling about the company at this time? I was still good, man. Uh, again, I just try to do my job, do what's asking me, and keep my nose to myself, and and just try to do it, try to have good matches, man. That's all I wanted to do. So all that, all that backstage. I uh, don't turmoil. want any part of it. Don't want any part of it. Good for you, dude. Uh, not everybody can stay out of that bullshit. Yeah, uh, Patrick. I didn't need it. Patrick Bennett is next. Haku was the, the toughest, but would Bad News Brown be at least top ten? I don't know. I'm sure he should be. I mean, with, with his... his reputation, with what he's got, you know, you don't get that gold by sucking dick. You know? <laughs> I'm sure he could have handled himself against Haku, maybe even Dick Slater. Um, last question is for me, Jake. Uh, he had a short run here with the WWF. It was only three years, but he wrestled for a long time overall. Is Bad News Brown a Hall of Famer? Yes. So if you had it your way, he's going in. Yeah. He'd be in there, man. Man, I would love to see it happen. And, folks, we'd love to see you get over to boxagimmicks.com and check out some of the incredible merchandise we've got over Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Check out this new tank top featuring a young Jake the Snake oh Roberts. Oh, my God, you bastards. <laughs> Look at that. That is Mid-Atlantic Jake. Uh, and right next to him there, we've got the tank top. It's him in a uh, classic pose, which is actually used on Jake's rookie card. Uh, and man, that is just a badass tank top. I think I might pick up one of those myself from boxagimmicks.com oh my on the snake on the snake pit page. So go out of your way to at least <laughs> go have a look, man, because we have got some great stuff over there. And by the way, it's too much. If you're looking to attract the 25 to 54 year old male demographic, why haven't you gotten to advertise with snake.com? My podcast partner over here is an absolute legend and he could st he could be giving his endorsement to your product or service he's still on tv he's still out making the towns for his signings and live shows and when he talks people always listen again had to advertise with snake.com make jake roberts your tag team partner today if you can't make it out to see jake at a live show or a signing how about you do the next best thing get over to jake the snake shop.com get your hands on some rare signed collectibles you can either wait till jake comes to a city near you or you can go right this very minute to jakethesnakeshop.com. Get a signed 8x10 action figure, t-shirts, and more. Get over to Cameo. Jake is at cameo.com slash jakesnake. And uh, check out the reviews for our guy, Jake. Here's a review from Tammy. This is my first time using Cameo, and, I really, and I'm really glad I chose Jake the Snake. He is just as charismatic today as he was 30 years ago. I saw some videos of other stars that were like 30 seconds or something. Ours was well over that. He really went out of his way to give me a great video. I mean, you can't do much better than that, brother. If you, it's all sweet, man. If you or somebody you know is, is a wrestling fan, a cameo from Jake is an absolute must. Just go check it yeah. out. You got to check us out on YouTube as well. YouTube.com forward slash at Snake Pit Pod. Short clips from our show, highlights, some exclusive content, plus giveaways. All you got to do, like, subscribe, hit that notifications bell, and you're eligible for all future giveaways. Also, if you've enjoyed our podcast, like, subscribe, leave us a five-star review on all podcast platforms. It helps us out. Plus, you need to go to adfreeshows.com if you're a wrestling fan. I mentioned it last week. Kevin Sullivan is coming on to do an exclusive podcast over there. Plus, you can get our podcast early and ad-free. We do bonus stuff over there. Jake does interactive things with the members there. Man, if you're a wrestling fan you're not checking it out, you are missing the boat. It's adfreeshows.com. Go sign up. Get Jake on Twitter at JakeSnakeDDT on Instagram at JakeTheSnakeDDT and on Facebook at RealJakeTheSnake. Follow me at Marcus P. D'Angelo on Twitter. Follow the podcast at Snake Pit Pod on all social media platforms. Jake, fun to revisit Bad News Brown. Yeah, Brown. man, it was, man. I, again, I just miss him, man. He died way too young. He certainly did. Uh, his legacy lives on through his family and through his work. Uh, if you haven't seen a lot of Brown's work, especially the young stuff when he was in uh, Stampede Wrestling, man, you got to go out of your way to check it out. He was a great yeah, performer. Damn sure was. And Jake, this was a great podcast. Guys, we'll catch you next time right here on The Snake Pit. Hey guys, Eric Bischoff here to talk to you about my friends over at SaveWithConrad.com. Are you looking to get out of debt? Conrad and his team can make that happen faster than me firing the hockey talk man. Wow. And you know that controversy creates cash, right? But you know what doesn't create cash? 
credit card debt. Save with Conrad can help you consolidate high interest credit cards and all of your other debt into one low monthly payment. They can even help you get the cash you need for home improvements or anything else. They've helped 83 weeks listeners save 500, 600, 700, even $800 a month. Seriously, your papers are going to go down faster than nitro ratings in 2000. Ouch! And how about this? No house payments for two months. That's right, no house payments for two months. And unlike the dirt sheets, man, the reviews do not lie. With over 1,000 five star reviews, find out for yourself how much Conrad and his team can save you by checking out SaveWithConrad.com today. Be grateful you did. NMLS number 65084, Equal Housing Lenders. Woo!